We're back. We're, We're back. back with episode number 220. 20. And it and by purely luck of the draw, we're wearing the same shirt. Or a similar I totally, shirt. Yeah, both wearing Watchtower shirts. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I literally, well, and I don't, I you probably can't tell by me sitting here in front of the camera, but I'm shedding weight. And um, because I want to, I'm trying to lose weight because I got this huge event happening and um in August we've pushed it out to August and um anyway trying to get down to the fighting weight and I'm actually pulling out shirts that I haven't worn in 15 years or longer nice. and and so uh yeah it feels kind of cool and so I wore this because of uh, uh Watchtower playing at Hell's Heroes a couple weeks ago and um I was I was just here briefly last week when Monty was on but uh Guys did a great job. He's an interesting, engaging guy. It was pretty cool. I I listened to it uh, when I was doing my uh, my takeoff for a huge plant order. Woohoo! My my life is so exciting. Yeah, he was a he's a he's a super nice guy. So how uh, who was singing for Watchtower when you at the uh, House McMast Heroes? Yeah, Jason McMaster. That's what I figured. Yeah, right yeah. on. And uh, they're out on the road. I think with uh, Dan uh, Dangerous Toys is out with. Uh, uh armored saint i do believe and that's another jason mcmaster joint yep so Plus he's singing uh, with dirty looks the reformed dirty looks as well so he's got dude he's like all over the map but he uh he really is a he, he really is a phenomenal guy and uh in fact uh last time i actually hung out with him he was uh he did the uh the vow renewal ceremony for uh Bruce Corbett and Gina Corbett, and so uh, fun times. He's an ordained minister and uh, works at a record store and a very cool guy. Has tons of projects. Evil United is another one. Um, he does a, a Judas Priest tribute too with his brother called Sad Wings. That's phenomenal. They do oh nice. They they do nothing but from like the first album to I don't know maybe Stained Class, Sin After Sin. I don't know. They do early, early deep cuts. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a band in, in L.A. called uh, Early Priest that only does stuff, you know, the early stuff like that. And uh, Steve Gaines plays guitar with them. Oh, yeah, I did see a mention of that. That's kind of fun. I'd love to see that. Yeah. So, anyhow, um, why don't we get into um, our P.O.W. P.O.W. POW. Man, I was so fired up. I have to thank uh, Francis Osley, my friend uh, that does professional voiceover work, and he's a phenomenal guitar player. Man, he can play. And he was uh, he was in Rattlehead, and he's played in Caustic, and has a project called Death Snake. He's really a great dude and a great musician. He gifted me a very, very expensive Shure microphone, and um, turns out it needs a few things to make it work, and... Um, I just, I got all the items I need. I just can't, I haven't made the connection yet. So maybe next week I'll sound just really good. Maybe I'll sound as good as Francis, which is <laughs> hard to do because that dude has a great voice too. But um, okay. And then on the, well, I was going to tell you on that thing, it's got like little sound effects. So I'm going to come up with an explosion and uh, whatever else, but pick of the week. And it turns out that the pick, the picks of the week, because we're doing rock and metal, um, are on my list of what we're going to talk about today, too. So I'll keep them in the stack. Uh, so my rock and roll pick of the week is Robin nice. Trower, Bridge of Size. And That's I just a phenomenal album. It, it is incredible. This is one I will take to the island with me. And I can listen to this thing over and over and over, and it never gets boring. It always sounds great. And all the songs are very, very meaningful. Um I don't know how many people know about Robin Trower. He was in uh, Procol Harum when he was 15, uh, and he was deemed Jimi Hendrix's favorite English guitarist, much to the chagrin, I'm sure, of Pete Townsend and Eric Clapton and Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck. But Robin Trower is wonderful, and you should check him out, especially this album, Bridge of Size. The new album, um, Joyful Sky, is also outstanding, and I would highly recommend it. He had a few... Uh, few in the middle of the catalog that were just kind of average but uh, those first five records are just unbelievable including the live album and um so everybody needs 
Robin Trower Bridge of Size. That's my rock and roll pick of the week. And I am really going out on the limb on this one, but I can't speak highly enough about this band. Talk about willing to take chances. Blood Incantation. I, uh, this particular record was a, was a groundbreaking one. Um, this is uh, Hidden Species of Mankind, and uh, it comes with a little book and a star chart, and these guys are pretty cosmic dudes from, from Denver, and they're, they are in a bunch of other bands. Uh, but, man, if you're into death metal, you need this. If you, if you love bands like Death and Napalm Death and Terrorizer, and then uh, if you're into ambient music, I know a lot of, uh, a lot of the heavier metal dudes uh, like my friend Jonathan Hatley from Asylum, they're kind of into the ambient thing, the Robert Rich, Steve Roach, Paul Abgerinos, that type of thing. And they comp they combine all those elements. There's elements of rock and jazz and death metal and grind and ambient. It's just really a, an incredible listen. Every Everything's an experience with uh, Blood Incantation. So um, Hidden Species of Mankind, Blood Incantation, that's my metal pick of the week. And, right on. And as as I mentioned, they are also part of the conversation today. So, let's get into it. What you got actually, any I got outs? a I, not a well, sort of. I have a new album that came in the mail today. Oh, Red <coughs> Mesa! Me. You told me about those guys a few years ago. Yep, this is the brand new album just came out. Red Mesa. This is they call themselves Desert Doom, slow, sludgy, heavy metal <laughs> I, I think that um you know i back in the day uh, john perez used to have las cruces on his label brain ticket and mm -hmm. uh i i remember uh, las cruces opening or having uh red mesa open for them if i recall correctly and so um anyway so that's uh but you had told me about them and i've actually checked them out and they're great the New Mexico Trio combines desert, doom, and sludge for a colossal album of high desert heaviness. That's what the hype sticker says. High <laughs> I like it. High desert heaviness. So um, I'm excited. Well, and I, um, I have a slight connection to this band in that my friend and former Ultimatum bass player. Oh, there, there you go. go. So he's still Alex cranking Cantwell. out is uh is in the band is in the band he actually looks like he's wearing a horde shirt right there i can see it better on there than i can an actual huh? norwegian black metal band horde oh, but yeah. anyhow oh, actually they're australian right yeah australian death metal, yeah, black metal band they're australian yeah so anyhow red mesa i'm excited to have the brand new album i listened to it today sounded great need to give it a few more spins obviously because i it was just playing it while i was working but man it just sounded so good um, I can't even remember how many albums they have out now, but that's the newest one. It's called uh, Partial Distortions. It's been a while so, since they put something out, hasn't it? Um, a little over a year and a half or so. Oh, okay. I mean, because yeah, they're uh, twenty twenty three. I believe twenty twenty two. I believe they were in my top thirty of the year. Okay. So there's only six songs on this thing, but it's not an EP. <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, those Doom guys know how to. Well, they extend their notes, so why not extend the song out a few minutes, right? Yeah, they're, they're definitely jams. So, and by the but way, yeah, I, let's get into. I, it. Yeah, okay. I was going to say let's get into it, but one more thing. Speaking of Doom, um, I don't know if anybody had the chance to see uh, Solitude Eternus in their actual reunion uh, deal down at Hell's Heroes, but man, I'm really proud of John and Robert and those dudes. They. Uh, they pulled it off. I, I, you know, I've been talking to John about this since the release of uh, Solitude's uh, last record alone, and uh, somehow they pulled it off. And man, talk about extending notes. Those dudes get after it. So, anyway, so that being said, where do so, we? So yeah, we're going to talk about. Well, we, we, I named the episode "Music Collectors" or "Music Hoarders" because uh, I mean then. Basically, what we're going to be doing is showing albums from our collection that are we have more than one copy of for whatever reason, and also talk about why you have more than one copy or why people collect copies. Because, um, like I was talking to John earlier today, I mean, I got a friend who's a Kiss collector, and he's probably got forty to fifty copies of every Kiss record. I mean, that is his collection. It's just Kiss. Uh, I know another guy on uh, uh, Instagram. His, his, his he calls himself the Alice Cooper collector. I mean, the dude's got more Alice Cooper records than I have 
you know cds behind me it's it's crazy but that's how some people collect they you know they collect one band then nothing but one band uh that's not me but no that's not me either and i but i do i I get it but yeah and you have quite the extent extensive uh well aerosmith collection you do have a lot of uh cooper you do have a lot of certain bands but um i don't know if you that's all you do because i know you don't you collect other things no yeah but yeah, let's uh, let's get into it and start showing some of them. I, uh, I've got a pile here sitting around behind me. I didn't grab everything, but I did grab a few. I, um, I, I grabbed a few too, and like I said, I got a couple that actually have a story. Um, I, I mean, I can just start with the two picks of the week. I mean, go for e- it. every time I see a clean copy of this, I, I especially like the green label Chrysalis uh, release. It it sounds great to me. It's what I it's what I grew up listening to, and then. Um, the the blood incantation this particular record has has about 10 or 15 different versions different colored uh vinyl and i guess that's kind of where it starts for me uh i mean i have um when the first aboth came out in fact i do have that um when when aboth le- released his solo record um i mean the packaging is great the you know, the box set, if you bought the CD, comes with a banner and a pin and a little f- action figure. And um, and this has, I, I mean, they probably have 20 different colors. Uh, I've got, and of course, I, I got them all. I just, I just traded, um, I traded my green one, my green Aboth for a repulsion tape that's worth about 90 bucks. Um, but I, I, I like the album a lot, but the fact that it's different colors... Uh, you know, Toxic Holocaust, they always do that to me. Municipal Waste, they always do that to me. They release it with a bunch of different colors. So, And there's a lot of record companies doing that these days. Um, I mean, the new Ace Freely uh, record just, you know, came out, what, less than a month ago? Right. And, and, and there's got to be 30, 40 different color variations. I'm not, I'm not even kind of showing this one, but actually I, I can real quick. Um, I, I mean, I only have two, but there's they're even doing variations on the cover so same album same music different cover different color variations on the vinyl that's well i you would you would think that's crazy but i might as well tell you that tell you the story that i was keeping in the in reserve um and i know that if uh hang on i know dead air is bad air but in fact this will this will drive my uh this will drive Poser Mark insane because I've, I'm have i always talking about this because I'm always looking for additional copies. But um, Scor- the Scorpions are one of my favorite bands. And uh, the Scorpions also, when they release... Uh, er, er, nobody knows what their first album is. Well, their first album is a, ge- a real jam called Lonesome Crow. Lonesome Crow. And... Uh, this came out uh, on Bomb Records. It came out on Harvest. It came out on a multitude of different different pressings, and it came out in a gatefold form. But to your point about the Ace Frehley, look at there. That's Lonesome Crow. Same thing. Uh, it's called uh, Gold Rock. It's on yep. Brain, which was one of their original ones. And then, hey, how about this? Gee whiz, that's Lonesome Crow too. Yes, it is. Go figure. And uh, well, hey, look at this. This is a Mexican version. That doesn't look like anything like the uh, the guy that's getting cool stung cover, on the hand. Here's my that's here's cool. one of my favorites. This made it, this would make a great T-shirt. This is also Lonesome Crow, and uh, and they delivered some of these on uh, clear vinyl. This was on Music yep. for Nations. And you I've also got, have picture discs of that one. Right, and I've got uh, several copies of that. Um, this one, they actually changed the, the the format a little bit, the the layout of the art, how that was. In fact, uh, you know, here's here's the two side by side, so you can kind of see you can kind of see yep. the difference between the two. Um, and then the backs are all different. They all have different characters on the back. And then uh, here's my favorite. You want to talk about this this is the Japanese copy, and you're yep, you're gonna have shell one. you're gonna shell out about three hundred bucks to get that with the obi. So I got it. So there's it's a your, weird obi too. Is that not the obi that goes inside? 
No, this is the obi that. Well, I I put it there. Actually, it was it. Uh, yeah, I put it there because I didn't like it covering up where it said the originals. Ah. Um, but um, and then there's another one, and I might as well get it out of the way. How many how many different variations are on this record? The Police Synchronicity. No Got idea. Any guesses? There's no at idea. least there's at least forty, and all these strips are are a little different. The coloration's different, and uh, these were actually pressed in Japan. They were all concerned about um, the um, the sonic quality of it. So it's virgin vinyl, and some of them, if you hold them up to the light, they look purple. And th those are the good ones. Those are the pioneer pressings, and uh, and I've noticed as I collect these these oddball. I think I've got forty. I think I've got forty of these, but some of them are the same cover. But one has a cola colored record, and the other one has. But you can't tell it unless you hold it up to a bright light. They look black, and then you pull them out and you hold them up to a bright light, and you can tell if they're purple or or the cola colored. And then, of course, the record clubs, RCA and Columbia, put them out, and they're on black vinyl. But instead of a red stripe, the stripes are pink. So there's just like, I, I mean, you want to talk about an identity crisis and not knowing what to look for. I, I look at these every time I see them because I never know if it's one I don't have. And they're, and they're generally inexpensive. And why I have 40 copies of Police Synchronicity? Only because they're all different. Yep. So, and I like and the I mean, album. See that that that's the premise here is I actually like the record, I like the music, I want the music, but then I think it's cool that there's just a multitude of different covers. So I got right. or that's, that's or what vinyl covers. Me too. Yeah, I I don't need like every version of every album by my favorite bands, but I mean certain bands, Aerosmith, Thin Lizzy, Ted Nugent, just overkill there's bands that i just collect anything by and so if i find something different i buy it however i don't necessarily go out looking for other copies but if you run into them in a record store and that kind of thing here i'll show you one right now i didn't pull everything i have from this one but um actually here's the original cover everybody probably seen this one before this is the amboy duke oh yeah survival of the fittest this is my autograph copy as you can see he's scribbled on his shirt right there cool painting of the band on the back live but this one's got multiple different covers uh, even and like like the Scorpions one you just showed. Here's another one where this one's a similar cover, but it no longer says Amboy Dukes on it. It just says Ted Nugent Survival of the Fittest. Hmm. Same thing on the back. It's on. It's a Polydor um, pressing too. It's, well, this is a German pressing. Yeah. yeah. The other one was a U.S. pressing that I showed. And then uh, here's a um, Gigantes del Pop. Which I believe is a Spain pressing of the same album. Oh, Can you do the Amboy Dukes? Yeah, I've actually it's, got that one. Yep, it's, it's it's just survival. They've, they've, the got several, the they've got several of those Gigantes del Pop. And, yeah, I've got uh, others, but and one of them is really really good. It's got like two songs on the second side. It's like an extended jam version of something. I can't remember what. Yeah, it was, Prodigal but... Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It's like 21 minutes long. It's just a jam. Yep. And then here's another one. This is also uh, Historia de la Musica Rock. And it's got a, a I've picture. I've got that from, one, too. Of, it's got, I mean, that picture of Ted is obviously from the 80s and, and has nothing to do with this album. I was going to say, that's from the free-for-all era, isn't it? No, that's actually – that photo is from the 80s because he's playing a uh, – and the fact that I know that he's playing a Gibson. Um, he's okay. not playing his – he's Birdland. He's playing uh, Les Paul. Gotcha. Um, which he played a lot in the eighties. Uh, in any case, just I just grabbed those. I mean, I have it on. The thing is, I'll show you this too since I since I actually pulled it. Uh, I saw a sealed. Here's a sealed eight track version of it. Never been opened. Never been played. Wow. So I love anyhow, stuff so, like that. See, and I wouldn't normally buy an eight track, but to your point, if I see it. And I didn't know it existed until I just saw it. Then I grab it, man. Yeah, same here. So, I mean, so yeah, that's that's one. I could, I actually have a few more pressings with the same, you know, with the original cover on it. But because uh, whenever I see them, like you said, I buy them. You know, with, give them away to friends, trade them, whatever. Well, the, and, and that's then, the thing. I, I I pick them up not 
try, just to try to hoard it myself. But y y you know, you never know when some somebody might have never heard of Robin Trower or Ted Nugent or the Amboy Dukes, and you're able to present them with a good, clean copy, and yep, away you go. Here, I'll show you another one since this is uh, the very first Joe Perry Project album. Okay. 1980, I believe it was. And um, I've probably purchased this album on vinyl like 20 times. I, I give them away all the time when I find clean copies of it because I just think it's such a great – it could have been an Aerosmith album. You put Stephen Tower's vocals on here, and it would have been an Aerosmith album. But anyhow, this is the regular version with the hype sticker and everything like that. And then here's this one, which is a white label gold stamp promo with the promo, promo photo. Picture. That's cool. It, it did not have the promo, and I've been looking for it ever since. It did not have the promo page, but it does have the photo in there, which I thought was kind of cool. And uh, it is a white label promo. And then, uh, of course, you know, like you and I always are looking for it, you got to have the Japanese press. Of course, you do. <laughs> but then uh yeah that one also i have on eight track and it's a columbia house pressing remember those oh yeah oh yeah the, you've the got gray, the columbia the, house all, thing on there yeah all the bodies were gray this one i here. noticed uh nils is oh, oh yeah it's gray I, see uh but then i even have a. <laughs> of course you have the cassette did i ever send that one back to you i think i repaired one or or I re-recorded uh, something it was, else. Yeah. Was something was recorded over it, and I re-recorded yep. it. Yep, exactly. One of these two, I think, I believe is is that. I, okay. I don't remember which one it is now, but in any case, yeah, it's. I mean, I, like I said, I probably purchased another ten of these that I've given away to people because you still haven't convinced me that cheap. we're. You still haven't convinced me that we're hoarding. Um, I noticed uh, Gary Ireton joined us. Uh, Nils Johan Orgard from Norway is joining us. He's an Ingve fan. He has 17 copies of the Trilogy album. Nice. And 11 of them are all different <coughs> pressings. And he's, oh gosh, he's got a, USR, a USSR pressing. That's cool. That tops my... And then, uh, yes, Fraser, I did see you interviewing uh, Justin from Hell's Headbanger. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, Damien Hairmetal says he has 10 copies of the self-titled Kiss album geez i don't know how many i didn't even pull i didn't even get that far up the stairs my metal room's downstairs and then i've got well, the audio file stuff in the living room and and here's and a question what, for you what's that here's a here's a question for you okay it's right there on the screen can you see it is that jw's shirts jw jehovah witnesses We're wearing watchtower shirts <laughs> <laughs> no, the answer is no. The only reason I'm wearing this shirt is because I actually fit in it. So, and um, I just grabbed the shirt to put on it because I was I came from the gym, so I had a nasty sweaty shirt on. So I ran in my room and grabbed the shirt real quick. And this one was I, on the this, top of the pile. Is <laughs> this is complete luck of the draw. We are not peddling religion here on the metal round table, <laughs> um, but we are peddling your understanding that we have multiple copies, like this thing right here. This is another Islander uh, Trey Sombres by ZZ Top, and and if you're gonna have a ZZ Top record, you've got to have one on Jalapeno Green vinyl audio file. I think that's a 200 gram one. It's a big, thick record. It's wonderful. Um, oh, let's get this out of the way because I know Rob would be disappointed if I didn't tout the uh, Osric Tentacles. Of course. Uh, th th this was the first. The Strangitude was the first one I heard. So, of course, it's going to be a little more special. I, I picked this one up in Amsterdam the last time I was there, but I did actually buy an American pressing. This is a a, a UK pressing, and they're hard to find because it's original on Dove Records, which was their own label. But um, I have multiple copies of Live Under Slunky and Jurassic Shift and all those other great Osric Tentacles records. And um, anyway, hey, how about this? Have you heard the Have you heard the uh, the remix of the no, I Pink not. Floyd Animals? I, I'm telling you right now, this record will make any sound system in your house, even a crappy one, sound good. It is so impressive, and and I don't normally say that. Usually, with audiophile stuff, you, you don't really hear the difference. I I have enough high end systems that I can um, 
that I can sort of hear a little bit of a difference. And I've played it on every system, and oh my gosh, nothing has ever sounded that good. It's crazy. What else you got? I mean, I got, right. a whole, well, I got a huge get into, stack. I got a bunch of stuff here, too. So I'm, I'll show you some metal. This is Back in 1990, I bought this album as a new release and was blown away by it. But this is the uh, oh, yeah. Deliverance Weapons of a Warfare. I always loved the cover art and just a great speed metal, thrash album, whatever you want to call it. I've got more copies of this than I can even show you at this time. But here's an alternative cover version that was on CD, which I don't really like the cover as much. But it's still cool collection item and of course it's like gotta, a different have camera the, uh, it's like a different camera angle it's like you gotta have the remastered over. gold disc version of it of course of course and then does it actually um, sound better it, well it's remastered so yes it does okay and it was remastered by rob hallwell so then of course you have to have the uh the long box edition <laughs> hey you know what i've seen uh i've seen bands starting to put those out again i know municipal you can get waste... them done they're very expensive to make though yeah municipal waste put out their last two uh on in a long box which is kind of fun let me see and then uh, let me show you the vinyl versions that i have sitting here uh i grabbed a few of them first of all this one i had to actually i had to take it down off my wall <laughs> but here's the original intense pressing from 1990 which is autographed by the whole band Wow, I've had that hanging cool. on my wall for years. Man, find that's that. The... Huh? Find that. Man, that's a that's a that's like that's ungettable. A, yeah, that's very ungettable. Then here is a uh a pressing from from rocks. This is actually a test pressing, and you can see it's got the uh the center labels in there. So this is a, there's a this is just a test pressing, but it has the actual cover, which that's not I mean it's kind of unusual, but I, I've seen other ones with that. And then here's the Another rocks that came with a CD version of it, with a different back cover, and then, and then the color vinyls are only some of these are really cool too. Here's a retro, retroactive, no brutal planet, one of those two. Anyhow, that uh, let me show you the vinyl on this one because it's cool, and the cover up the back cover on this one's different too, and each of them are a little different sound wise too because the original is okay the remastered version on rocks is good but oh, this is just a yellow version hmm. there's a better one in here somewhere i'll find I it i often wonder how, what makes them um what what like i like to when i buy colored vinyl i like to buy it that kind of matches the the motif like like that right I, that's why this I, well, this one's yellow because all the text and the logo and everything else right is yellow. right but but i would have been happy with a blue one too but there's a blue one in here too yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then here's another first version. This is a, another pressing on rocks. They did multiple pressings of this, and I think this one is blue. Yeah, there you go. And that, this one also came with a, you know, a CD, a CD version, version with it, which was kind of nice. And then here's the uh, picture disc oh, the version. Picture, yeah. <laughs> How does that? Is that a modern picture disc or is that an old? It is a film? modern picture disc and sounds amazing. It doesn't yeah. have all the crackling that you you tend to think of when you think of picture discs. Well, they don't use car they don't use cardboard pictures sandwiched between two pieces of vinyl anymore. They use mylar, which is thinner, which makes the vo the uh, the grooves deeper. So they actually sound way better. Oh, here's a here's the one I was talking about. This is the uh... oh the blue and black merge. I think they call that merge. That's killer. And yeah, so I've got tons of co not to mention I also have it on cassette. Never was on eight track. All of them have inserts. The inserts are. Some of them are different. They're not all the same. Um, I got to work on most of these, so that's another reason I have so many of them, not just because I went out and bought all these. Um, so, yeah, anyhow, I love this album. have for decades. And, well, yeah, since you're showing Rare copies. Birds, I'm going to show you a Rare Bird that I have multiple copies of because they just re reissued it. Uh, this is Terrorizer World Downfall. I love this record, and, and I... And one thing that that uh, that makes this so special, other than the fact that it's Terrorizer, is look at that. That's a nice color. Yeah, and it's it's I think it's limited to a hundred, and um, this is uh, this is a super rare. I mean, it's it's super rare and it's super expensive. So I I have other copies that I play. Because I don't want to play the expensive copy. And that's why I have, have multiples, just kind of like this one. This Repulsion. 
Oh, I have yeah. an original. I have a German. I have a, uh, a UK pressing. This is the re the remastered reissue on Southern Lord that has all their demos and then uh, and then horrified the album. Um, but I've got multiple copies of this because I don't want to wear it out. And I have worn out records before, just like you've worn out eight tracks and cassettes. Um, in fact, it, it got to a point at one time where I would carefully take the record out, play it, uh, record it to, to a tape, and then just listen to exclusive of the tape and, and put the uh, record record back on the shelf so I didn't play it anymore because I didn't want to wear it out. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you some more. I've got. I didn't. This this has been hanging up on my wall forever. I took it down and it cracked. The glass cracked. Unfortunately, I have another piece of glass to replace it. So excuse the crack. I mean, I literally just cracked it today. If you can see the crack going through it, <laughs> but anyhow, this is like I said. I, I I have multiple copies of every just about every Ted Nugent album, every Aerosmith album, Thin Lizzy. So I didn't pull a lot, but I pulled a few. Um, this this one I got personally signed in two thousand eight by him. So of course, I had to pull it down off the wall. I I I think I think I told you the last time um, when you were here. I actually that was the first thing I ever got signed by any big rock star type person. In fact, he, he had asked to go to the record store or if there was a record store in Omaha and we took him to a record store and I uh -huh. bought that album just so I would have something for him to autograph. And he said, I thought you had this already. And I said, I do, but I don't have it with me. And he said, you bought another one of my records just so I could sign it. And I said, yes. And then, uh, uh Derek St. Holmes signed it too. And I, <laughs> And I was so disappointed. I just wanted Ted's on there. But anyway. Oh, I got a few more copies. So and it, so what are the differences? Let me show you the differences in these. This is just the one I've had for a long time. It's a, it's a, it's a really clean vinyl copy. That I, this is the one I usually pick pick up to play. But the, you can actually can see it's got some wear. I've had it for yeah. decades. So it's 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 been worn, used, but I, I still play it. Dude, and that's such an iconic cover. I mean, that's... oh, I've got a giant banner of it on my wall over here. Oh my gosh, I love that! I love that graphic. <laughs> this one is is a, a promo copy, white label promo copy, and it's um, this, which someone sent me. I actually kept a letter from the guy who sent it to me because he said you're such a big Nugent fan. I knew you'd like it, but if you look, you know how it always has the not for sale thing on there. This right. one actually has a big demonstration not for sale on it, which I thought was kind of weird. And I have another one. I may not have pulled that one. Um, that's uh, it says for government sale only on the back of it which i thought oh, was kind of yeah weird. yeah i you know what i've got a bunch of tapes that are um th they look like bootlegs but they're not they're pressed in like saudi arabia or in thailand or vietnam or korea or germany or whatever and they have the same thing they say um for military sale or for government sale only or whatever. yeah for government sale yeah and this is just happens to be a canadian pressing so on the cbs label i'm shocked not really. Yeah, and then of course, well, of course, <laughs> of course, you have it on eight track. Is it and sealed? Of course. No, oh. that one's not sealed. CD, and then I've got it on cassette too, but I didn't pull the cassette because I was just running out of time. But yeah, so I'm, I'm not going to show more Ted Nugent. That's all I'm going to show Nugent. So well, I, to... I'm going to show something <laughs> that I actually, actually, absolutely love. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Grand, Grand Funk Railroad. We're an American band. Now, this thing has a wild history because uh, if, if many of you don't know, they came off the, the survival tour and they were penniless and it had to basically hawk, uh, hawk their equipment to get home. Uh, their management and the record label had basically funneled all their money to their own pockets and they basically had nothing to do. So uh, Frank Zappa had heard about it. And, you know, Zappa used to tour around with a recording unit and he said, you guys need to put out a gold record. Well, this is pretty gold. Um, in fact, when they um, when they pressed them, they were all on yellow vinyl. Well, they, pressed, they, they shipped 3 million copies, and they were, like, out. And then they ran out of gold vinyl. And so they started using black. Well, so that, that's what fired up my collectivity. Look at that. That's, 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 when, you awesome. don't, that's when you don't clean the press... And you just start throwing black, uh, black uh, uh, vinyl down on the gold thing, and it and I've got probably three dozen copies of something that has a flaw or a 
like a root beer stain on it or that's not quite all yellow. And then they even pressed them on black. And uh, so they they succeeded because this record by far outsold everything. And Todd Rundgren, if you're familiar with Todd Rundgren, he was a great producer and songwriter. Um, Hello, It's Me was probably his big hit. And uh, he and Zappa were buddies and they helped Grand Funk reestablish themselves um and which and is so I, weird because i mean they were selling out they were selling they, out stadiums they, like, they sold they sold stadiums. 80 million records before um before they did this one and they just got ripped off by their their man you know sorry i hate to drop names but terry knight uh not a very good person um <laughs> and uh but but anyway so the grand funk thing plus i love grand funk as as many of you already know, in fact, uh, I I had broke I broke out the uh, the Grand Funk Red album. I actually have about I, I'm kind of like your friend with the Kiss collection. I have I think I have one from every country. I, I mean I have Taiwanese, Vietnam, uh, Venezuela, Portugal, Canada, America, UK, Germany, France. I love the record. Number one, I love the record. But it's a great man, record. But but it, it it just you got and of course the Japanese pressing, is talk about pre- a jam. Yeah, this is a jam, and and I grew up playing, trying to play this and and listening to it at 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 will. It was like that was I mean I was so into Grand Funk, Deep Purple, and Aerosmith, and then along comes Ted Nugent and Led Zeppelin, and the rest is history. Yep, same here. Well, since you mentioned the band, I got to show at least one. Of course you do. Wow, that's now, a real keepsake. Yeah, this actually, um, I, I've met lots of bands in my lifetime. I've never been honored to meet Aerosmith, but I've had lots of friends who have gotten to meet Aerosmith, so I have a lot of signed vinyl from them because every time they'd go, they'd get me something signed, which is always very nice. This particular one here, my friend Randy, or Trog, from if you guys, anybody watches my channel, you know what Trog is. Anyhow, he went to um, the Kiss auction in um, in Vegas several years ago. And this was part of Gene Simmons' collection. And oh, wow. I've got behind here, it's got the little certificate and everything from Gene Simmons and everything. So it, so this was Gene, was part of Gene Simmons' collection. He And he bought this. And surprisingly, I mean, he's an Aerosmith fan too, but he knows that I'm, they, you know, I've just been a fan since I was literally a little kid. So I, he gave me this copy. So anyhow, that's, uh, that's cool. But where's the other ones at? Somebody had asked <laughs> me if I'd lived in Omaha, and the answer is yes. I graduated from Papillion High School, if you know where that is, over by Bellevue on the south end of town, and uh, had seen Ted Nugent there in Douglas Park. All right, I'll go through this quickly. Take your so you time. got your standard version of, of course, the, the album, yeah. but but it is, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. If I can get some, is that got the like vinyl touchy cover? It's like yeah, it's, gray, got the, it's got like the. A, yeah, I don't know what you call it, but it's got like a, a texture on it, but it also is kind of embossed to the, you know, the whole thing is embossed. You can right, feel right. Yeah. So, and I've had this one for a long time. It actually looks like it has a lot of ring wear, but it doesn't. It's actually, the ring wear is on the, the plastic, which is why I use the sleeves to begin with. Did that thing have a, a poster in it? Not that I'm aware of. It had like a, just like a, a two panel, like a 24 by 12, kind of like the Grand Funk, uh, all the world. Uh, all the girls in the world beware. Not that I'm aware of, because I mean I've got. Well, which here you go. which one had a poster? There was one of them that had, was that. Uh, oh, live bootleg had a giant had a poster for sure. Not and, it, and this isn't a big one. They just like oh maybe it was the. Is is it rocks that has them like live, but they're like caricatures? Yes, that's the sl- the inner sleeve. That's yeah. the sleeve. Okay. All right. So then I have the uh, the 180 gram remastered pressing from a few years ago, of course which doesn't have any of that texture stuff in it and um, managed to get a test pressing. Um, this one here was uh, a 1998 test pressing from the I, album. I think sonically that thing sounds the best of any of the, any of the Aerosmith records. I mean, as much as I love get your wings and I, and I, as I mentioned before the show, I'm really digging night in the ruts, but that thing that thing's a true masterpiece. It, it sonically is brilliant. The songs are killer. It's heavy. It it's flows. It's very heavy, especially for '76. Yeah, it flows, and, and it and it's got its uh, quiet moments and its heavy moments. I just, man, I love that record. And of course, you have to have the 
the oh, Japanese pressing, right? No, I didn't break it out because I knew you would. <laughs> and then, the, of course, the uh, the eight track. track. That one's sealed, buddy. No, it's not. It actually. Oh, oh you put it's got it the in shrink a... wrap on it. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's it's it, it, this is how it was. I got it. it was in in this, so it's in good shape. But yeah, it's it's not sealed. Do you? But do you I have also have. Do you still have an eight track player? No, I need to buy another one, and I've been looking for a while. They're just not many are out there. So yeah. Anyhow, that's so. Uh, I also pulled this out because I just thought it was kind of interesting that people might, you know, here's the one of my all time, another one of my all time favorites. This is the that's Japanese a good one. pressing. But here's remember what I showed you earlier the Historica de Rock. Oh yeah. This is Toys in the Attic from Spain, with a different cover on it. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Cool picture. Gotta have that. They were that. badass back in. They were so badass back in the seventies. They were. Uh, and then, of course, I've got other copies of that one. But finally, this is one of my all-time favorite albums as well. Yeah. These things are always tore up because they're white. Right. This is the 180 gram pressing from a few years ago from Record Store Day. This is the one that actually has the Aris with wings printed on it, and actually says "Draw the Line," which wow. You don't see those very often. No, I haven't. Um, seen, I've never seen that. This is a this is a UK pressing, and then here's one Japanese pressing. Oh, I like I like the OB over the top. Yeah, it's That's kind of fun. interesting. And then there's, the, there's the other. So I have two different Japanese pressings with two of different OB strips. Well, of course, yeah. Then here's the uh, white promo. label radio promo. Um, actually, you can see the the white label. On the back, and then of course the original. I kept it. I, I usually tear off shrink wrap, but on this one I kept it on for the reason that of all the stickers that are all over it. Yeah, and they're never gonna get those stickers off. I mean, those stickers have been on there since 1977, uh, right? I got. So, I found one of those, and I, as I carefully unwrapped it, the sticker fell off. So I was able to put it in ah. a in a in a, uh, a sealable bag, and then. Blew it on the and there's outside. how much I there's how much I paid for it. Six bucks. Yep. Because I bought them back when you know vinyl was kind of not the thing. So, but yep. anyhow, how about this? Uh oh. Led, Led Zeppelin too. <laughs> and I've got a several copies of I've got several copies actually uh, of this one eight track. This one shows up all the time. Yeah, I see that frequently. I know that Columbia that that was kind of in the heyday of Columbia and they were they were just trying to sell records and they put that thing out all over the place. But for the very same reason that you have Aerosmith, I have this Led Zeppelin 2. Everyone loves Led Zeppelin 4. They think no one's great. House of the Holy's not bad. I mean, but I love 2. That is super just super duper super duper heavy. You've got to have this somewhere in your collection. Oh yeah. The Purple oh, Machine. Of course, Head. that's one of my all-time favorite albums right there. That's I, like that's like heavy metal defined in the early 70s yeah like i said this this is what my my parents were deeming heavy metal in fact i've got a german pressing i gatefold i have singles i have dutch i have man i it's like i have one of those from every country too i have a yeah. i have a uh a cd pressing of that deep purple album and inside of it it's got like a little essay from warner brothers which i thought was kind of odd you usually you know you get it from some writer and then uh but it's it says on there you know, this is one of the defining albums of heavy metal. 1970 was it 71 or whatever it was. 71. It's just interesting to read all that from actually from you know. Well, se- is 71 Brothers. is when they first kind of got rolling. I mean, they had put out uh, what is it? The something about the talisman. Um, the first two with uh, Nick Semper and those guys, uh, but they don't. I, I the Mark II uh, lineup to me is the the preeminent lineup. Of course. Here, here, I, I have think, a. I don't think anybody is, will disagree with that. <laughs> I, I have a, I have a confession to make. Uh, of all the records in my collection, I have more copies of this than I do of any other record. Don't ask me why. I just, I actually, I love the record. It's great. My parents had it, and um, Herb Albert was like the king. This is an audiophile pressing on green vinyl, and I actually met Dolores Erickson, who's the gal on the cover because we all as young men really liked Dolores Erickson. Fortunately, she's still with us. She's about as old as my parents. And on that cover, she was a few months pregnant. She and her husband were expecting their first baby, but I have 
I see them all the time, and they're all different. He sold millions. I, I would like to know what the final tally is on, on that, and I didn't realize until about 10 years ago that A&M Records, the A was Herb Albert. So um, he owns... He owns the rights to that, but I, I'm guessing that that thing has probably sold upwards of 20 to 30 million copies. I wouldn't doubt it. And and I see them cheap. I see them in collections all the time, and nobody wants them. But I, now I notice that the, they're they're trending up if you can find. And I have a Mexican copy, Japanese copy, Venezuelan copy. I mean, he distributed that thing all over the world. And so because of availability, I lucked out, and I have... Mm, Maybe 75 to 100 copies. I don't know. Wow. So we got a question. Would you please describe the sound between 8-track and cassette? Do you think one day 8-tracks might resurface again? I uh, hope not. You can actually still get make 8-tracks. They, there's still plants that make them. Sure. But I, I can't see it becoming a thing. Uh, they don't really sell new 8-track you know, players anymore. You have to get a refurbished old one. Um, and frankly, they they didn't they sounded okay um but they you know the the switching the, the clicking between the tracks um sometimes would go right in the middle of a song which was really annoying yeah. <laughs> so yeah they weren't the greatest thing in the world i, I mean yeah. i only have maybe 40 or 50 of them and it's more of a nostalgia thing than anything else they were far uh, less think... re far less reliable than the cassette um, yeah the cassette was way more reliable yes and, and but the but... a track format was convenient because you I guess that was the the knock on the cassette is you had to wait for the whole side to kind of be be up and you could be listening to typically you you were listening to two songs because it had four because it had four tracks that it would change to yep. um so you could get two songs and then immediately get to two more songs yeah sometimes uh, they sometimes the tracks would bleed through too oh you're... yeah if your heads were just a, a little bit out of alignment yep um there, so... there's a guy here in town that I I, I you already know it fixes all my uh, audio video stuff or audio uh, vintage stuff and um, and and he has some but they're there for show they're boat anchors basically he um, that's not that's not a go to format I mean it's kind of like reel to reel um, you know you can get reel to reels that sound just unbelievably great but it's such a hassle to place the thing lock it in thread it through do this turn it through make sure it doesn't slip out and then it just um it's not a convenient format and the a track no, it's not the a track it was a, a smaller version it was a little bigger version than the cassette um but it but it just it it didn't last long and and like i said it's wildly unreliable because of the tracking issues but i'm sure a couple more before we run out of time sure I, I this is another band that I pretty much collect anything by. These are both American pressings. For some, I don't know how well it's going to show on there. For some reason, there, I'm sure it's just a press thing, but they're very different. One's dark blue, one's like a lighter blue. Yeah. But a lot, like just like the Kiss albums, you know, they, they always came with stuff. Um, the Angel Records did. So, right. Um, I got the more. Greatest, than, I got the greatest logo in rock and roll, I think. Oh my gosh, it's an awesome logo. It's it's never been created, never been touched. Matter of fact, on the back of this album, it's. Yeah, it's perfect. You know what yeah. I mean. So, um, but yeah, the 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 originals, and you can see it's got the the hype sticker still sitting in there too. The original hype sticker, but uh, yeah, it came with the the. This is the U.S. copy that came with the poster, like this yep. poster that came with it. It also, of course, just like the Kiss ones, you can't you can't own it without having the merch form. You gotta have the merch form. If you don't have the merch form, you're a poser. So. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Just ask Poser Mark. He's always cherry picking uh, Kiss albums for the for the merch, and then of course the Japanese copy. But the thing is, the Japanese copy is a lot nicer than the U.S. pressing for multiple reasons. First of all, that one is just a single thing. This is a gatefold, and the inside of the gatefold has got oh wow, fantastic live because yeah. Angel's showmanship was you know second only maybe Kiss in Parliament. Um, just, you know, that they were just a fantastic band. And of course it came with the, you know, the Japanese lyric sheet, but the big thing about this one is 
is finding a copy that has the poster in it because the poster in this one is completely different from the poster in the uh where is it i just put it down somewhere i'm gonna have to go <laughs> look at my copy because i i just saw that it had a poster i didn't e i didn't even pull it out to look at it well this one definitely has it i just got to figure out where i put it at so at least it did oh there it is <laughs> i knew it did because i wouldn't have bought it without it but it's this poster is a monster I was going to say, that's a lot bigger than the American pressing. Oh, wow. That's unusual. They are like they look regular. They look like regular rock and roll people. Yep. Which is... They, they look after like a while, sugar loaf. Which, is, which, after a while, is what they wanted to do. Unfortunately, you know, they fought with management to... They couldn't shake the... Their last album was actually supposed to be called Bad Publicity, and they wouldn't be wearing any of the white stuff. Um, the album was put out like on day one as bad publicity with all the guys in the hotel room with women all over the place, booze and, you know, smokes and all that kind of junk in the room. Uh, the album was recalled the same day it was released. So if you have one of those suckers, they're rare as can be. Yeah. Um, so the album was changed to the name was, the album was changed to sinful. Um, but there's a ton of copies out there with sinful, but if you pull the record out and look at the, the center label, it says bad publicity on them. Anyhow. Huh. Um, anyhow, so yeah, I mean, I've got that, you know, I've got here's a, I also have a, although it's missing the OB, which I really bothers me, but I've yeah, got the, Jap the Japanese and the American pressing of the CD. And I, I can, I it, can run you a good color copy and send it to you. At least you have the, I would love to have that. The graphic. I'm going to, I'm going to jam through a few more real quick about this one. Wow. Japanese TNT, pressing. I, or TT Quick. This is so I've got a couple of US pressings. This is just the normal player copy. But this one here is a gold label. You can see it's got the little sawtooth cutout on it. Right. But it's a it's got the entire um it's got the the photo, the promo photo and the the sheet in there for the, you know, for the promo thing that went to the radio stations and, and reviewers and that kind of thing. So, so that, tell, t talk to me about that. Do, do you know? Do you know what the DMM is? The direct metal direct metal direct mastering? metal mastering. I never knew what that was. Well, basically, they skip the tape. They uh, what what they would do is they would scrub the master tapes to another tape, get it all combined, and then they would uh, burn it to a plate for pressing. They they skip. They skip the uh, the secondary tape stage and then they go right to the and I mean you you mess up you got to start all over it's there's no for no forgiveness there so I'm guessing that that's probably just a straight ripping record with minimal uh, overdubs and and what have you yeah that's the other thing is the stickers actually on on this promo pressing that DNF, DMM sticker is actually on the the record itself the record itself but you can see it's got the gold label right there and yeah. Whereas this one here, that's it's got the DM things in it, but it was on the shrink wrap on the outside, so I just stuck it in there with it. Mm. And of course, you know you got to have the the CD and the cassette because if you don't have you both, do. you're a poser, right? Right. <laughs> well, speaking of poser, I got three left. What do you got? Is you know we got time for three more quick ones? Yeah, go for it. I've got only I've got two more, so yeah, okay. no, I can go through them quickly. You know, oh, that's an amazing album. Jeff Beck, that... Blow by Blow. This is a half-speed master recording. I have that. I have the Nautilus uh, and the Nimbus pressings. I also have the Jap two different Japanese pressings, one that's been remastered. I have an American pressing, German pressing, English pressing, Australian pressing, blah, 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 blah. That, that album basically lit the fire of um, jazz fusion in my life. That and uh, Chick Corea um light as a feather and i have multiple copies of that one too this is kind of a fun one the b-52s this is their first album i used to spin this thing all the time when i was uh, djing back in college i just got to where i really liked it because it's just funny and you know songs like rock lobster 6060842 uh, they do a cover of downtown um there's a moon in the sky and it's called the moon i just thought they were funny but this is a yellow 200 gram ma half speed master, and it sounds so great, especially on a nice system. I suspect and that album might make a comeback in a future video that we're going to be doing. The I one think, where 
since we're going to be doing a video on stuff outside of metal that you enjoy. Oh, that one very much will. That's an Islander for me. And then, of course, I think I've already mentioned this one, this Boston thing. I, I've got so many different copies, so many different varieties. Three I hear so many people making fun of that these days. They, so many people make fun of that album. I love those first why? two albums. Why? I don't know. I don't know why you would. Those first two, and they almost are like a, like a perfect segue one to the the other. Yep. Uh, in fact, when I went to make a compilation of Boston for a friend of mine, he's like, "Well, it sounds like you put every song off the first two albums." And I said, "Uh, well, yeah, pretty much." <laughs> and then I scattered the some. Ones. Of, some of the third album in there, and by that, they pretty much are not Boston anymore. They're just Tom Scholz yeah. and his buddies doing cover tunes. But um, multiple, I have I have probably two dozen copies of that in different form or fashion. And of course, the tapes. I in fact, I even have the uh, the Mobile Fidelity tape on Chrome. Uh, oh, on, nice on Chrome tape. Yeah, of that one. Let me get into these. So. Uh... Very first Switch of Sister, oh, super yeah. heavy, super fast record. I've got two different copies here that are, um, these are both from the, the small UK label Secret Records. They're different in, the only difference is the labels, and there's some other small differences, like like on the back, some of the numbers are different, stuff like that. But the big difference is, one's a yellow label, one's a black label. The yellow label is just normal, like you would expect. The red, the black label one once you get to the end of the song and the day of the rocker, it goes into the grooves at the end, into the end grooves. And because day of the rock, rock, and until you go lift up that record, it just continues to say rock, rock. Oh, that's rock, cool. Rock. So it goes into the run out place and just continues to play. Yeah. But only, it's only, it's not on this one. It's only on one of them. So it's, like I said, two different pressings from Secret, but, which went out of business. And then, of course, um, later on, they remixed it and added a few songs and, I don't like this one anywhere near as much as I like this one. Uh, I know they didn't like it because it was so raw, but that was what I liked about it. You know, it kind of had that, it wasn't all that different from like, like early Raven or early Venom, you know, the rawness was what added to the appeal. It was yeah. just so heavy and fast. And I, I mean, you can put, a, you can put lipstick on a pig and it's still a pig and you might as well just enjoy it at the, in its natural state, you know, sometimes. Yeah, man, I, eat, eat, eat the ham. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, this is my last one I'll show, but this is actually there's two albums here, but this is one of my oh yeah you know, I've been a fan of this band since this is under this I have two different pressings on uh on attic um they're almost identical, but the labels are completely different, so they're just two different pressings. Hmm. This one's got the original attic this one's got a later attic pressing you can see the records in the back on that one are they still I, are they, they're, they're not still around are they 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 man i had attic pressings of triumph and Ru and rush and i don't think attic's still around and then of course i have the original yeah of course you know self-release of the band which i've shown this before so hey um, eagle fan gary we are not hoarders we are connoisseurs of fine vinyl and then the second album as well metal and metal again oh. two different two different attic pressings the covers are nearly identical. The back covers are close, but the oh, the lettering's different. Yeah, I've got I've got multiple copies of that one actually. And then the only in the original pressing, which I believe it's this one, it's autographed, it has a picture sleeve in it, and the rest of them didn't. I've never seen another pressing that has it. And it took me forever to find the. Uh, this is the wrong one. Of course it is. <laughs> man what a tale of, of two lives though that anvil is i mean that that the documentary is so hard to to watch because <laughs> i really just, i did yeah. really enjoy it though no no i enjoyed it go. when they're opening for the i mean when the scorpions are opening for them i mean good grief oh wow that's killer i love yeah, stuff I, like I, that that reminds me of zz top and sod and i, I love finding things in those big piles of pictures so yeah, it's a picture sleeve in it. Like I said, it only came in the original, the first original pressing. After that, it was just a plain white sleeve, which is unfortunate because that's a really cool collage. So yeah, uh, is that it? Oh, I actually I pulled a picture just too. Of course, you don't have the. I eight swore track of that. I would. I mean, I would. I swore I had a picture disc of um, hard and heavy too, but I, I don't. So I'll I'll have to keep an eye out for that one. Hmm. Well, yeah, that's it. But yeah, I mean, getting down near the 
down near the end here. Uh, Boston rules. Yes, Frazier, they do. Uh, the COC, I, I have an original pressing of the first album, um, but I don't have multiple copies. I actually have the CD and a tape, I think. Uh, Led Zeppelin II was my first, Gary. That's a good choice. Um, I love that record. I can play it, and it never gets boring. Kind of like uh, uh, that Animals record. It sounds it, The fact that it sounds better now because it's been truly remastered and remixed um, is really awesome. Um, I don't know. Uh, you should let us know what you think about, uh, what, you know, what's in your collection. We saw that Nils had, had talked about his multiple copies of Trilogy by Yngwie Malmsteen. And that's cool. And I, and I guess, I don't know what, I, I guess I would love thing... to actually see that. Maybe we can bring him on sometime and he can show him. Yeah. We would love to do that. Nils, if you're listening, please, uh, Please grab your collection at some point, and we'll we'll have you on. Just email yeah, us absolutely. or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Um, Let me show but, another record. This has nothing to do with what we were just talking about, but I wanted to show this off because this this is the Slaughterhouse second album. Okay. Um, uh, Face reality. Print. Is that a test pressing? It, it is the new test pressing for the new oh, oh. version, but it's got the it's got the original um, Metal Blade uh, promo sheet and promo photo in it. And these are going to be going on sale at Rocks um, Records, No Light to Metal Records soon. And there's going to be two or three copies of the test pressing with the original sheets going on sale with them. Cool. So uh, anyhow, I just thought that was really kind of fun. So anyhow, that's it. We're not I mean, freaking hoarders. We're not hoarders. We're collectors. Yeah, exactly. Here's another oh, one. And, there, and, and that one's got multiple covers or whatever. Yeah, the back covers with the big difference. Yeah, I've been on a Voivod bender still, and uh, done a couple. This of sounds things. amazing. I, yeah, I mean, it's great. absolutely amazing. Yeah. But this is actually the record store day pressing that's going to be released, sold on April. What's the date on there? April something or other. April twentieth. Yeah. Something I that something weird... as a as a collector or music buff that I that I despise when I when I do this is when I just sort of miss i miss out on certain certain releases like uh, speaking of voivod phobos and Kators. <coughs> i mean whoever talks about those they talk about killing technology they talk about roar they talk about dimension atros dude Kators and phobos are great too angel rat is another one that is killer angel rat's brilliant and uh um, so anyhow that's the that's the uh the color so vinyl. Scra- also- uh, yeah. So now I'm scrambling trying to find those those things on vinyl, and it's just darn near. Let's show you the other side too. This, it's kind of I don't know if you'll, you'll be able to see it or not. But here's the other record. Is that is, got the etch the laser etching on it? Yeah. So there's the other side. Then this side's got the laser etching, which I. Yeah, you, oh, can, you can see, see it. it. Yeah. And an itty bitty little center label. <laughs> yeah. So they, we, we, I was like. They said we need a center label for this side. I'm like, usually I, when I see these etched ones, or they don't have a center label. They're like, if you don't, if you don't put a center label on, even a small one, it'll it'll bowl warp. He goes, that's why all those all those ones that are out there that you see have the etching on the back. That's why they're slightly bowl warped. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you're always learning but, something here on the metal round table. Yeah. A little bit of a <laughs> bummer is the the post office. Uh, Chingasa the, the corner. corner. Yeah, yeah, that's too bad. So I, I can't see. I can't get another I can't get another one unless I go to record store day. So because <laughs> they it's literally got... all went to record store day except for like four copies that came to the label and this is one of the four copies. So in Scotty, any case, uh, Scotty Adams says we y'all need to do a show about seventies and eighties obscure bands. Oh gosh, we could do that easy. Yeah, we could do that easy. But yep. let me. Let I was me put uh, away, I let me... somebody else. Somebody else said was it last week or. I don't know. Recently said that they'd like to see us do a um, a Southern Rock episode. Man, I'm all in. I mean, I There's know a where ton to of great I, Southern Rock bands. You yeah, know, I know, where to, the, I know where to start. The Norm, you know, the Outlaws and Skinner and all those bands. So there's sure. a ton of stuff that you know is lesser known that I love. So, anyhow, we are over our time. So I guess we need to get going. That was a lot of fun for me. <laughs> yeah, no, <that> was <laughs> great. I mean, I you know, and I could have kept pulling records. I didn't even talk about the multiple copies of Toxic Holocaust stuff that I have. And so I guess municipal waste. I guess the vote came in, and and everybody's saying that we are um, hoarders. 
not yeah, collectors. Yeah, we are freaking so. hoarders. Oh, well. Call us what you will. We're going to continue to buy multiple copies of records. And guess what? When you're looking for that one copy and you know, nobody else has them and we have 12, you're going to have to yep. play nice. I have given a lot of copies away. I, yeah, I mean, I, I, that's just, you know, yeah. someone, like I said, that Joe Perry album, I, I've sent, I've, I've probably sent 10 copies out in the mail just in the last few years. Every time I see one, I buy it because I think it's an underrated gem that nobody really knows about. It's just a great album. I feel the same right, way well, about the Robin Trower. Let me uh, let me get let me get in here and see if I can figure out how to get us out of here since Rob usually does all this stuff. And, yeah, see my question geez. earlier. What is it, Fraser Dawson? I think they have a new album coming out. Anvil. Does yeah, Anvil have a banner, new record coming out? which I never put up. So there's the banner. Okay. <laughs> and there's where you can find John at John hey. on Instagram at Carcass Art. You can find Stevo at Harmless Rebel 868 on YouTube. Steve is actually in Brazil right now. That's right. Buying records. Yes, I'm Multiple sure he Multiple copies is. of Sepultura records, I'm sure. You can find Rob on Instagram or TikTok at Metal Rob's Records. And you can find me on Instagram at No Life to Metal. Or you can go to YouTube and you can look up Scott Waters and or No Life to Metal. Either one of them will get you there. And... That's it for this episode. So for episode number 220, 220. thanks for watching. Metal, Metal will prevail. Will prevail. Okay, then I'm going to leave you hanging while hey, I Rob, how to get Osric out of Rob, Osric Tentacles, here. Osric Tentacles, Osric Tentacles. I have to get it in since I missed it that one week. <laughs> <laughs> See, it was a distraction. I'm still, I'm still looking, so you can keep talking. There, right. oh, there we go. Hey, Outro.